Hey, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Cruising with the Case Handler. And this is the Immigration Link episode, and we're here again for a great show. Want to welcome my attorneys on board right here on 93.5 WVIP FM and also on social media. If you want to see what we look like, do log on to Facebook, my page, David Squeeze Anarchy, the firm's page, Paula Pollock, Isaac and DeSico, aka PPID, and also on the Case Handler page. And I've got some very uh, stern, firm looking attorneys this morning ready to represent you in the capacity of immigration. But before we do that, we must remind you, ladies and gentlemen, that you will be getting free phone consultations when you reach out to the firm. So take advantage of it and start calling the firm now. Call them before 9 a.m. and you will be getting those free phone consultations. It's very good to see the attorneys in office. I have Alan E.K., the general, who's going to bring us up to date as to any immigration news that there is. We've got, of course, Nelson Madrid. All right. Got to say a uh, pleasant good morning to him. Look very casual in office there in his alligator shirt. And also we have Conrad Pollock looking very lawyerish. Got the, the props, not propped, I'm just messing with you. Got all the books in the background and everything there. Welcome, gentlemen. How you all feeling today? Good. 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 Well, good, good to be back. I haven't been on the show for a while. This is my this is my first broadcast from uh, my office. Yeah, you took, uh, took a hiatus. I mean, seeing that, I'm quite sure we're going to be um, doing a show from one of the offices very yeah. soon, more than likely the Brooklyn office. But um, it's good to have you all. Today's show is exclusively about immigration. So everyone that's tuning in, get your immigration questions ready. Bring them on, okay? Um, my attorneys here will bring us up to speed. But once again, I, I, I implore you, I appeal to you, this is not the time to be doing your cases yourself. There are many positive things that we can do to help you where immigration is concerned. If you have never reached out to an attorney, even if you have done so, get a second opinion by way of PPID. Very, very, very important. We have seen where people have called the firm and realized that, oh, something can be done. Yes, it's an extremely important that you get that free phone consultation and then after that, hire them. Once again, the number here to call the firm is 844-774-3529. Also want to remind you that the firm is not only about immigration. Our um, Adam Handler is not on the show today because the show is exclusively about immigration. But I want to remind you that he's truly an attorney that is, uh, is going to treat you like family. He has helped thousands of people in the capacity of personal injury. So if and when you do get hurt, make sure you reach out to Adam Handler. And it's the same number, 844-774-3529. Yesterday we had a show all on personal injury where we spoke about quite a few cases where he has settled for his client. With that said, let's jump right into it, gentlemen. It's good to have you all. Y'all look so vibrant and up. You know, I'm like, wow, these guys, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna get into an office too. You know, I feel left out here, you know? But let's jump right into it. Alan E.K. Welcome, you are the general, and if and when you are on the show, it is about immigration news update, it's about updates period, it's about how you feel and think as to what's going on with immigration. We know you've got an intimate connection, okay, with the Department of Homeland Security. We say that because of your tenure in, of course, the area of immigration law. So what's happening, my man? Okay, so let's talk about some of the things we've been following. Um, first of all, this is not something we've been following, but the Holtzville USCIS office <clears throat> is closed today because of the storm. So if you live on Long Island and you had something, some business with the Holtzville USCIS office closed today and maybe closed tomorrow while they, try, while they try to get their power up. Okay, next, let's talk about fee increases. Very important. On July 30th, USCIS proposed fee increases, and the fee increases were an average of 20% across the board. Now, the inflation rate in the United States is 7%, but what they're doing is they're tripling the fees, and one of the most significant fees that they're tripling is the fee for naturalization, which is going up from $565 to $1,100. Wow. So if you're planning to file for naturalization, do it now. 
you've got the new fees go into effect October 2. So if you want to save money and pay a $565 fee for your citizenship case, instead of 1100 file now. Okay. <clears throat> the last raise that the USCIS did was 2016. And these fees basically pay for their entire budget. Uh, and as I say, the inflation rate is 7%, but they're doing a tripling of fees. Okay. So that's really significant fee increases. Next, we've been talking about furloughs. The uh, USCIS was planning to furlough 13,000 employees out of 20,000 uh, because they had a budget shortfall. Uh, they've requested $1.2 billion in emergency funding from Congress. The Senate adjourns August 10th. So we have to wait and see if the Senate is going to give them the money they need so they won't have to furlough people because if they furlough people, basically USCIS is going to shut down. And if you file for citizenship and your case is being processed and they have a furlough, you're not going to become a citizen and you won't be able to register for vote this year. Next, public charge. We all know about the terrible public charge regulations they put into effect. But the Second Circuit, which is a federal court in New York, has now hold, put a hold on the public charge uh, regulations. So right now you don't have to file this 944. You don't have to worry about public charge right now because that's been knocked out uh, while, while this is going on. Uh, interesting, uh, today uh, or yesterday, a federal court in, the Mo in Maryland uh, the basically fourth. Yeah, the Fourth Circuit basically said that that can it stopped the, the court case on public charge. But in New York, it's public charge, no, not right now. Okay, next, DACA. We know that the Supreme Court uh, put out, put out a decision which was favorable and didn't let the Trump administration knock out DACA. But the Trump administration will now reject any new requests for DACA and they will limit renewals to one year. Whether that they're gonna get away with that, whether somebody's gonna to go to court and try to stop that, well, we, we, at least we know right now, if you have a DACA renewal coming up, you're only gonna get a year. And they won't accept new cases, even though they should, that may have to go to court. Finally, card production. We talked about how USCIS was, had, was printing their cards in two places in Kentucky and in Missouri. They shut down the card facility in Kentucky, didn't tell Congress about it, didn't announce anybody about it. But uh, this is now resulting in massive delays in getting your green cards and getting your work permits. And as of July 9th, there were 50,000 green cards waiting to be produced and 75,000 employment authorization documents waiting to be produced that haven't been printed yet. Now, a lawyer in Ohio, uh, who I happen to know, Rob Cohen, went to court and got them to force them to issue the work permits. So the court case that he was successful in, they have to be issuing the work permits, but the green cards, I think, are still on hold. So this is something to watch about uh, card production. So those are the kind of things we've been following now, the fee increase, the furlough, where immigration pro proposed to furlough 13,000 employees because of their lack of money. Uh, that they were, it was supposed to start August 3rd. It's been pushed back to August 31st. They've requested 1.2 billion in emergency funds from Congress. If they get it, maybe there won't be a furlough. If they don't get it and there is a furlough, immigration is gonna basically shut down. So that's the latest news and since the Senate recess is August 10th, we'll know soon, maybe by the next program, is there going to be a furlough or not? Are they going to get the money they want or not? So that's the latest news. And we're open for business now to take your questions. I'm sorry, actually, very quickly, um, just uh, Alan may have misspoke or gotten a little confused. The filing fee for citizenship is $725 at the that's moment. Including the fingerprint fee. Right, that's including the fingerprint. So the fee is set to increase till 
to what, Alan? Eleven hundred dollars? Yes. Right. So it's seven twenty-five. Um, I think Alan had said it was five hundred or something. So I just wanted to correct that. Going from seven twenty-five to eleven hundred. Right. 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 And I wanted to expand on that. I want people to really take this very, very seriously. In a time like this, where we have a pandemic and we have virus issues and all of that, you don't want to be wasting any more money. As it is, it's tough um, with getting money. So right now is the time to file, and this is a priority in your life. You may want to reach out to the attorneys, get your filings going right now and save a lot of money. It's not even, I mean, I'm listening to the, 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 the rates and the rise in fees. It's unbelievable how they just jack up the fees. That's exactly what they do. They just jack you. So right well, now- they, they, they did claim that it's been a few years. It's been, I don't remember the last time, but it's been at least three years. 2016 was the last time. Yeah, so it's been a while. So, you know, typically they raise fees every every year or two, um, usually every two years. So this time around, it took them a long time to get with it. So that's why I guess they it's the equivalent of two fee increases this time around. What's so right? Alan, uh, yeah. how can you raise fees in a time like this? People are looking to push back elections, but we're not looking to push back fees you know, that can affect a people. I mean, come on, this is incredible. You know, the things that they're supposed to be pushing back on, they're not pushing back on it. I'm simply saying to the people that's listening here, you're listening to a great show, Cruising with a Case Handler, the Immigration Link episode. And I'm saying every one of you, if you have not filed your cases, now is the time to file. Call the attorneys and let them do it for you. Save some money on the fees. It's ridiculous. The number to call right now is... 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. Yeah. David, the fee increase is just, it's indicative of the overall attitude of the administration, as we're always saying, you know, they're not here to help you. Immigration is, immigration has never been your friend. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is doubly so today. The administration, their goal is is to end immigration as we know it they they're they're not here to help anybody uh they're looking to for, stop the flow of immigrants to this country you know for the, whatever their convoluted reasons are um so you know the fee increase to me that's not that's the least surprising thing to me that they've done i mean I, I'm, I'm surprised it took them this long <laughs> All right. Um, so what do you guys think about the show on Netflix, Immigration Nation? I happen to have started watching it. In my own words, I would say it's brutal. Yeah. Brutal. It's the brutal. reality of the environment, of the climate that we're currently in. In fact, there's a, an immigration judge um, who basically says that they have weaponized the immigration courts. You yes. know, immigration judges, just so you know, Squeeze, are supposed to con literally there is a policy that says they are supposed to conclude 700 cases a year which would be the equivalent of 58 cases a month and if they don't complete those cases they get a negative review and as a result with enough negative reviews they could lose their job yeah this this is a quota that the trump administration created this never existed before there never was a quota for immigration judges to having to having to complete a case within a period of time. Now, under the Trump administration, they created this quota. And as Nelson says, uh, if they don't, if the judges don't uh, finish this amount of cases within the specified period of time, they get a negative rating, and eventually they get booted. So, clearly, clearly the the the, the, it, the goal the goal is obvious. You know, they're trying to move these cases as quickly as possible, regardless of the outcome. It's so bad, man. I'm watching the show and tears literally came to mind when I saw that kid with her father. And it, you're talking about quotas. There are actually quotas on the show. And by the way, folks, if you're talking about what we're talking about, we're speaking about a show on Netflix, a documentary called Immigration Nation, where they're following these, uh, these ICE police officers around with uh, cameras, real live stuff. They're actually, the, the bosses are telling these guys on the, on the road, hey, you better make sure you come in with X amount of people. That's all I want to know. You know, and, and I mean, video, videotaping, videotaping the people who they do arrest, giggling, laughing, making yeah. jokes about it. I'm making joke of them. Hey, look at this one on the bullpen. You yeah. know, and videotaping and all of that. Huh? They're teasing these people, provoking these people, and it's you know making ah, it's, it's 
Anyway, listen, we're here to help. And that's what Pollock, Pollock, Isaac, and DeSico is all about. As a law firm, we are here to help. We're just bringing to you the reality of what's happening in the United States of America, the greatest country in the world. And that's the reason why we've got attorneys such as Alan E.K., Conrad Pollock, and Nelson Madrid, and they're here to answer your immigration questions. If you want your questions answered for free, make sure you call now this number off air. If you want to get them answered for free, call off air now. The number is 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. Place your questions also on our Facebook pages, Pollock, Pollock, Isaac, and DeSico, the case handler's page, or David Squeezanicki's page. First question here, gentlemen. Um, I need more info on the I-944. I'm reading on the USCIS website that it doesn't have to be filed now. The form doesn't even come out anymore. I don't know what that's all about. Well, that's, that's the public charge. That's the declaration uh -huh. of self-sufficiency, and that's what we just spoke about. Um, as a result of a federal lawsuit, um, basically a judge said that you can't enforce that or you can't require that now in the middle of a pandemic where so many people are unemployed and have lost their jobs. So for the moment in New York, it's not required. Um, obviously, at some point, you know, when this pandemic is over or when it's at least under control, it'll probably go back into effect. Well, that's only so if Trump gets reelected. If Trump loses in November, that form will go away. So again, one additional reason, if anybody needs additional reasons to vote against Trump and to vote for Biden in November, there it is. Uh, if you have relatives that are applying or friends or important people in your lives that, that are applying for their green cards that maybe don't make you know, a lot of money, then you don't want Trump to be president. Because if he is, this public charge rule is going to come into effect at some point when the pandemic ends, whenever that is. Um, but it, 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 it's just one more piece of bad news if Trump gets reelected. But and be, yeah, I wanted to say, uh, you, David, you were talking about Immigration Nation, the, the Netflix uh, uh, documentary. It's fascinating, um, the, the backstory. You know, the government, uh, it was the government's idea uh, to hire these documentarians, it's a husband and wife team, um, and get them to come and film behind the scenes it was done two three years ago uh and they figured oh this would be a great propaganda thing for the government you know they can show what great services our people are providing um so anyway i guess the, the filmmakers had different ideas and especially once they saw what was going on behind the scenes because they're actually in the cars riding with these people you know they're riding with the agents and they're they're filming them knocking on the doors at six o'clock in the morning you know they're trying to round these people up I mean, it's fascinating, but the um, government, when they saw the finished product, they threatened to sue. Uh, in fact, they did bring a suit to try to prevent it from being aired until after the election. The lawsuit was brought by the federal government against the filmmakers, uh, basically saying, uh -huh. you cannot show this film until after the election. Anyway, they lost, obviously, because it's on Netflix now. But right. it's really, I don't see what the government is capable of. And... You know, for all you people out there that are doing cases on your own, you know, if something goes wrong, you could be one of those people that the yeah. ICE agents are knocking on the door of. You know, I, I mean, it's I'm not exaggerating. This is this is real life. You know, yeah. I mean, you you need to look at this, see what goes on on this documentary. It's a six part series, by the way. I mean, it's a it's a there's a lot to it. But all you need to do is watch the first episode, and you'll see that's, what you're facing. That's what I did. People out there trying to do cases on your own, if it goes south and the case gets denied, you end up in removal proceedings. You know, you could be one of your your front door could be one of those doors that they're knocking. Right. right. You could be it's collateral. <laughs> That's right. You know, that's right. You know, you know okay. collateral, meaning, you know, what they do is they come knocking on the door looking for someone in particular. Possibly he's a criminal. Probably he's not. Um, but then if anybody else doesn't have their paperwork, that happens to be in the apartment at the time, they take them in as well. You know, I mean, it, it, and that's what they call collaterals. Um, but it, this is serious business. Absolutely. Let me give out a number and then Nelson, can you can respond. Once sure. again, folks, if you're joining us, this is a show on immigration. Um, today we're doing exclusively immigration questions, immigration input, immigration update. We are doing it with PPID. 
because Nelson's going to ask me a question and I'm going to respond respectively and appropriately as we always do. What's the question you got for me, Nelson? No, it's not. It's not a question. What I was no, 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 say, no, no. That's not a question you're supposed to ask. Oh, me. oh, I'm sorry. Uh, you down with PPID? You know me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Nobody asked me that. You got to ask me that. That's what gets the show going right here. So the number for PPID, ladies and gentlemen, anybody out there, if you need immigration help, it's very important to dial this number, get a free phone consultation, but more importantly, hire Conrad Pollock, hire Nelson Madrid, hire Alan E.K. They are attorneys and they're all about helping you. If you can't be helped, they'll tell you and they won't take your case. But if you can be helped, they'll let you know. The number is 844-774-3529. Call now for a free phone consultation. 844-774-3529. Yes, Nelson. You know, I just wanted to say, you know, people do have rights. And even though you are detained, uh, or if you were to be detained, um, you know, you can fight a case. Uh, something that I typically recommend all my clients do is if they are encountered by ICE, simply be very respectful and say, listen, I have a lawyer. I don't feel comfortable answering your questions. I don't feel comfortable signing any documents. When my lawyer is present, I will speak with you. When my lawyer is present, I will sign documents. You know, um, I have heard of cases where people sign a removal order and don't even know what they've signed. You know, um, it's a very stressful situation. You know, not everyone is necessarily subject to mandatory detention. You know, um, and, and I'll talk about mandatory detention momentarily, but something a lot of people don't understand also is being a permanent resident is a privilege. What does that mean? That means if you are outside of the country for an extended period of time, or if you are arrested and convicted of certain crimes, immigration can try to take your green card away, okay? Being a lawful permanent resident does not grant you indefinite status, okay? Um, and people need to keep this in mind because many people don't understand, you know, a lot of people serve a five-year probation and on the last day of probation, they get picked up, you know? So it's things you need to be aware of. Also, some people file their own cases and have, have a, a conviction, you know, have a conviction that may make them inadmissible. Maybe they need a waiver, but they don't know that they need a waiver. So now they file their case on their own. They've spent money. They go in person and the officer says, you need a waiver. They have no idea what they're talking about. And again, there's a big difference in price between filing for adjustment of status with USCIS and, you know, proceeding with adjustment of status before an immigration judge. Um, you know, and I want to talk quickly about mandatory detention. Mandatory detention applies to those released from custody after October 9th, 1998. And these are just general rules. Um, someone considered an arriving alien is ineligible for bond. Mandatory detention pretty much means you have to fight your case from inside an immigration jail, okay? Oh. For a permanent resident, if you are convicted of two crimes involving moral turpitude, you are subject to mandatory detention. If you are convicted of an, of an aggravated felony, if you are convicted of a controlled substance offense, a firearm offense, you have to fight your case from jail. Chances in, other are words, you in, in other words, Nelson, you're saying if they're not a citizen, pretty much, and Correct. they have any of what it is that you're speaking about, a they can't be out on the street. They're, in other words, in not so many words, they're not going to get bail. They've Correct. got to fight for themselves behind bars. In Correct. other words, they have to retain an attorney or fight independently Correct. to get themselves out of the situation from behind bars. That That's is correct. Crazy. And those cases also move very quickly because you're being housed or detained at government expense. So those cases move very rapidly. Um, now, if you're placed in removal proceedings and you don't have one of those, you are, or if you're detained and placed into removal proceedings and you don't have one of those convictions, you are eligible for bond. Now, obviously, the bond amount would depend on the ties that you have to the United States, whether your parents are here legally, whether you're married, whether your spouse is here legally, whether you've been working at the same job for 15 years, whether you have children, whether you attend church, whether you're active in your community. All of these are typically factors that the immigration judge takes into consideration when he grants bond. For those people who are here illegally, one 
conviction for a crime involving moral turpitude would subject you to mandatory detention. One controlled substance offense conviction would subject you to mandatory detention. A drug trafficking offense, domestic violence, those convictions would subject you to mandatory detention. And those are people who are here now who have no status. And unfortunately, what happens is many people try to file their case on their own. They have one of those convictions. They think, oh, well, this happened. You know, I can't tell you how many times I've heard this. Well, this happened more than 10 years ago. That's erased. I don't know who told people that a criminal conviction from more than 10 years ago is erased, but it's not. You know, it's not. So, you know, you've put yourself on the radar. Now immigration knows where you live, where you work who you're married to, where your kids go to school. They know everything about you. You've got one of these convictions. Your case is denied. You forget about it. But then all of a sudden, there's a knock on your door. You know, so you want to be very, very careful. No, you want to use an attorney. That's what you want to do. Absolutely. And that's the reason why, uh, one minute, Alan. Uh, that's the reason why it's very important that you call this number, 844 774 Three five two nine. That's eight four four seven seven four three five two nine. That is the number for the law firm PPID Pollock Pollock Isaac and DeSico. If you call them now, you will get a one hundred percent free phone consultation off the air, privately and confidentially. Upon after which you can actually retain the attorneys. Let me give the number slowly: eight four four seven seven four three five two nine. That's eight four four PPID. Law. This question is for you, Alan, and you can say what you want to say after you answer this question or after. Hey, I was wondering if anyone knows how long it is to get their EAD card during the pandemic. I applied for adjustment of status in May, and I've only received receipts at this stage. Any information would be amazing. Thank you. Alan. The normal processing time was, before things hit, hit the fan, was about three to five months. But as I just said at the beginning of the program, they stopped issuing cards. They closed down the facility in Kentucky, which issued the cards. They have a smaller facility, uh, which they're working cards from. And there's a lawsuit, which was successful, that forced them now to issue the working cards. So hopefully the working cards will come through now, but they're about 35, they're about 50,000 or 70,000 working cards waiting to be produced. Hopefully this lawsuit by um, this gentleman who I know uh, and he won the case for and forcing them to issue. So hopefully the cards will come through soon. Now, I wanted to follow something that Nelson said about being on the radar. Uh, the question is, how do you, you have a criminal conviction? How do they, you come to their attention? Well, you come to their attention if you file for naturalization without talking to an attorney. If you travel outside the United States and you come back in, and at the airport, they pick up that you have a conviction. So this, if you have a conviction, don't travel without talking to one of us. Don't file for citizenship without talking to one of us because you're gonna be calling yourself to the attention of USCIS and may wind up as Nelson said in a removal proceeding. Right. And as good as Nelson is, it is extremely important before you do all of that, that you reach out to the firm and ask for him. All right, ladies and gentlemen, he's that good. The number, once again, is 844-774-3529. Um, this is a special episode on immigration, on cruising with the case handler, which comes your way 8.30 a.m. each and every single weekday morning, 7 p.m. Saturdays, 12 noon on Sundays. A quick one for you here, Conrad, before we get to the top of the hour. you got 60 seconds. Good morning. How are you? I have an immigration question. I am a U.S. citizen in Georgia, filing for mom, visa holder, living in New Jersey. Can she do her medical in Jersey since her case will be filed in Georgia? Yes. Where she does the medical is irrelevant. As long as it's done at a proper facility on the list that immigration provides, she could do it, take the medical wherever she wants to take it. But she can't do the medical until they ask her to do that. They send her a notice to go for a medical. Okay, beautiful. And ladies and gentlemen, you can hear and see and feel the depth of these great attorneys um, with the law firm that's been around for just about 60 years, Pollock, Pollock, Isaac, and DeSico. Um, we re refer to them as PPID. Nelson spoke extensively about you having run-ins with the law. Why? Because we call him the maverick, okay? He handles those cases at the firm, all right? So we have, of course, the Alan E. Case, who has that, like I've noted, intimate connection with the Department of Open Homeland Security, for lack of a better word. 
It's because he has the connections. He can pick up the phone, he can email, he can reach out to people there. Conrad Pollock is the managing partner at the firm. Once again, great attorneys, phenomenal firm. Reach out to them now. Let me give you the phone number a few more times before we get to the top of the hour. We continue on Facebook. All right. The number is 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. When you dial that number, tell them that you want a free phone consultation off the air. 844-774-3529. Call now. 844-774-3529. Three, five, two, nine. Let's go to the top. It's nine o'clock. All right, there we go. We got some more questions here, but one of the questions I wanted to ask you, um, attorneys, all right, is um, I wanted you guys to expound on VAWA, what it is, how it can help, can it still help people in this climate, and what's going on? Any of you? Sure. Um, I'm on a roll today, right? <laughs> uh, so VAWA is the Violence Against Women Act. Um, both men and women can file and apply for VAWA. Um, one of the first things you have to demonstrate is that you were married to either a permanent resident or a United States citizen. Um, the next thing you have to demonstrate is that it was, you entered into the marriage in good faith, okay? Um, not obviously for the purposes of obtaining an immigration benefit. So you're going to need evidence, right? Evidence would include, you know, pictures, bank statements, credit cards, mail, you know, showing that you both lived at the same address. But, but um, Nelson, isn't the violent act itself, let's say someone hit someone, hurt someone, them going to the hospital, isn't that enough evidence? No, not necessarily. Um, the crap beaten out of them? That's you're you're also speaking in a in a perfect world. We don't live in a perfect world. Many times, abuse comes in many different shapes, sizes, and forms. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've done cases where you know the abuse might be financial, might be verbal. Um, you know, abuse isn't always only physical. You know, so you know, yes, obviously, if you have physical abuse, if you have an order of protection, great, you've got a stronger case, but those aren't the only cases that go forward on VAWA. You know, let me give you an example. We represented a gentleman um, who filed VAWA against his spouse. Um, she would basically go out with him in social settings and verbally degrade him in front of people. You know, I'll, you know, uh, when I want to, I can have you deported. You know, you need me. I could call immigration right now and he's out of the country. Um, she would also do other things that obviously I can't talk about on the air. Um, but, you know, this is what I'm saying. Abuse comes in many different ways. In right. fact, my client was arrested because he hit a breaking point one day, started drinking and just snapped, you know, because he could no longer tolerate the abuse. Now, for VAWA, that's an exception. Although he was arrested, you know, obviously, given the circumstances, given his living situation, you know, um, we were able to overcome that and successfully get him VAWA. You know, um, another requirement is that you suffered battery or extreme cruelty at the hands of your spouse, um, that you're a person of good moral character, and that basically you deserve this benefit because it is a benefit. You know, VAWA is a lot different than a U visa, okay? Many people that are the victims of domestic violence are also eligible for a U visa. But what's the difference? With VAWA, just oh, call Well, what is the U visa? U visa is for crime victims, and domestic violence is a qualifying crime. Now, the U visa is different because if you are the victim of domestic violence, you basically have to cooperate with law enforcement, right? In order to get a benefit, you got to cooperate with law enforcement. If at any point you stop cooperating with law enforcement, they could pull the certification and you get no benefit. A U visa also takes a lot longer than VAWA. VAWA typically takes about, you know, depending, you could do VAWA either one step or two step. Either you could first file your application for VAWA with the supporting evidence. Once that's approved. There, in other words, in not so many words, they're not going. Go ahead. Um, once that's approved, you can then file for employment authorization and adjustment of status, or you can do it all in one step and do everything in one shot. You know, some people prefer the two-step 
uh, because if the I-360 is denied, if your VAWA application is denied, then your adjustment of status is denied. And the filing fee for adjustment of status is $1,225. So some people prefer to file for adjustment of status after the I-360 is approved because it's less of a risk. Well, Nelson, also, isn't it another major difference for VAWA? You have to be married, no? But you, you no, don't. Co correct, correct. Also, with VAWA, you just have to call the police. You don't necessarily have to cooperate and have your husband or your wife prosecuted you know um in fact we've done vowel cases where the couple is still together you know they're still married wow. you know just you know he or she kept threatening their spouse and telling them i'm not going to file for you i'm not going to help you i'm not going to do anything on your behalf and you know the person is sitting at home i mean literally the spouse who is here legally is controlling that other person because of their status you know, an important so, difference also with the U between the U and the VAWA case. Again, the VAWA and the, the VAWA case, they have to be married. And you have to demonstrate that even though you might not be married anymore, that the abuse occurred you know, before, during, after the marriage. Um, but you have to show that it was a, a, that it was a legitimate marriage. Um, you can't just move, you know, move in with a guy for a week. Can't be he, a common law marriage. He, he slaps you around a few right. times and then you separate. You know, that's probably not going to cut it. Um, but so, so you do need to be involved in a bona fide, engaged in a bona fide marriage in order to be eligible for VAWA. For the U visa, you don't. Um, in fact, we have a new case. We just signed up recently uh, last week, uh, a young lady from Brazil. Um, in fact, she came here with a student visa and we were, we were trying to figure out how we can extend it and change her status to tourist possibly. And then we get to talking about her personal relationship and she's telling me about this boyfriend that she's been living with who's a citizen and how abusive he's been and he stole in fact the reason that her she she came in the first place to extend her status was because he stole her passport so and she he stole all the documentation um so we're talking about it and i'm saying and 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 she's got a police report against him and, and the guy is crazy and he's this and he's abusive he's violent and and i'm saying what we're, we're going in the wrong direction here so i get the uh, Mr. Ma Mr. Maverick on the phone, and we're talking about this, and we're saying, "Hey, isn't this a U visa?" Yeah, they're not married. I mean, they lived together for a while. I mean, even though that wasn't even necessary that they lived together, but the fact is, she got a police report against this guy. Uh, she has an order of protection against this guy because he's abusive. We are now doing a U visa for this person. What is her status? She's out of status. Okay. She had a student visa. It expired. And it, it, one of the reasons it expired was because of the pandemic. Uh, school went out. And then this, and her boyfriend stole her passport, stole all the documents. So well, she didn't even know what the date was. So, people, are, people are afraid to call the police when they're out of status. So, yeah. Yeah. But that's, that's a big, and, and you know, I'm glad we're talking about this now. That's a big, big mistake. You know, in fact. Not to call the police. Not to call the police. Especially not New York. New York, they're not going to come. New York is a sanctuary, sanctuary city. They're not going to arrest you if you're illegal. And not only that, you know, just listen, I had a case where a woman was the victim of domestic violence. Long story short, her husband was arrested. She refused to cooperate. You know, part of the process for a U visa is the law enforcement agency has to certify. They have to verify what you're saying is true that you were the victim of domestic violence, that you cooperated or you had information that would be useful in that investigation, you know, and they have to sign something. They have to basically, it's called a certification. Now, if you don't cooperate, they're not going to cert. In fact, I've gotten letters where they say, you know what, we arrested him, but then the wife, uh, the girlfriend refused to cooperate, you know, and thus we're not interested in helping her. She didn't help us. We're not going to help her. Interesting. You know, so it's very, very important. As you would say, it behooves all victims of crimes. You know, Squeeze, just yesterday, and I was talking to Conrad about this this morning. What a number for me, Nelson, uh, you know. Sure, it's 844 774 3529. That's 844 774 3529. I was speaking with Conrad about this this morning. Um, I was at the Peekskill office yesterday and I went out for lunch uh, with uh, a friend and uh, the restaurant I went to, I had spoken with the manager on previous occasions. He knew I was an attorney. 
um, he told me that apparently a couple of months ago, there was a fight at the restaurant. Someone pulled out a knife, slashed him, and he got 13 stitches on his wrist. Wow. And he showed me the cut. And he told me that he's been cooperating and that uh, the perpetrator had agreed to a four-year sentence, but the judge believes he deserves more than just four years. I explained to the manager of the restaurant where I was having lunch that I would definitely be able to assist both him and his wife. Because with the U visa, it's not just the victim, it's the victim and his spouse and right. any minor children that they may have who have no status. So, you know, that's a perfect example. You know, my client suffered a 13 inch gash on his wrist. He was cut with a knife. He's been cooperating with law enforcement. He's got no status. And as a result, you know, I think it's a quid pro quo where law enforcement basically says, you're helping us. We're going to help you. And now, you know, the only downside of the U visa is it takes many years because there's only 10,000 U visas available for the entire United States. So typically you're looking at about a six or eight year wait, but nevertheless, you know, you're, you're on your path to legalizing your status. And, and you are protected while it's filed? Absolutely. And that's what I was about to say. Now you've got a receipt notice. God forbid, you know, you it's are encountered by ICE. You can pull out your receipt notice. They can check their system and they're going to know you're in the process of legalizing your status. Typically, someone who has applied for a U visa, you know, the important thing with ICE is ICE wants to know, even if you're here illegally, that you're doing something to legalize your status. You're not just sitting down at home with your arms crossed doing nothing. So if this gentleman were to be encountered by ICE, excuse me, he could pull out his receipts demonstrate he's got a case file they can verify and he'll be okay and they will allow his case to be adjudicated and ultimately he will get a green card so just, just to summarize we uh, we have, we're talking about u visa for victims of crimes we're talking about vawa which is called the violence against women act but it also can apply to violence against men and today I'm going to be on a two-hour program where they're going to be talking about violence against men, men being subject to VAWA and being able to benefit. So keep in mind the two different things, U visa, victims of crime, VAWA, violence against women or men act. Absolutely. And um, here's one from the Facebook page. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, attorneys. The number, once again, for the firm happens to be 844-774-3529. Phenomenal show so far. Getting a lot of information Ladies and gentlemen, we're being so educated. However, it is extremely important that you get your personal private consultation with one of these attorneys. Dial the number 844-774-3529 and get yours off here. Here's one from Denise or Joseph. I want to say thank you so much for sharing Denise or Joseph on Facebook. Carolyn Anderson, the Tiger, Linda Shaw, and the others. Denise said, Squeeze, got a question for you. Well, it's not for me, it's for the attorneys. My husband don't want to, don't watch the program because he's at work but I do want to inform him. He's in the US, but I'm not. Can he call him for that free consultation? Of course he can, right? I can answer that question, right? He can call him regardless of the fact that he's at work, right, gentlemen? Absolutely. All right, here's a question for you, uh, Conrad. Uh, if a, a US citizen petitioner has filed a family sponsored visa application for his married son, Indian citizen, and grandchild who was 15 years old when the application was filed in 2011, how long does it take to get a green card based on this scenario? And which age do they consider for application of chip grandchildren in this file? Age at the time of petition or current age. And I did that verbatim. What, uh, is it me or I'm not hearing it? Not you said that it's a, a US citizen applying for married son, married daughter? US the, citizen, uh, yeah, a U.S. citizen filed a, a, a family-sponsored visa application for his married son, yes. That's a third preference petition. Um, right now, cases of that nature, uh, they're working on applications that were filed in 2009 uh, currently. So do the math, 10 to 12 years, uh, a case like that takes. Uh, unfortunately for the child, um, 
what's going to be relevant is the child's the uh, the child's age as of the date that the visa application is ready to go the, when they have their appointment. Uh, if the child was 15 years old, I think in 2011, which means the case is still pending. Uh, if that's when they filed, the kid is now 24 or whatever. Uh, odds are he's not going to be uh, eligible to a company, but it's important to look at the date of the petition being filed and the date when it was approved. Uh, the period of time between the date that that petition was filed and the date that it was approved can be used under what's called the CSPA, Child Status Protection Act, to reduce the age of the child. So in other words, child uh, is 25 today. Um, if it took five years for that petition to be approved, they, by law, you can deduct that five-year period from the age of that child on the day of the interview so if he's 25, you deduct five, that makes him 20 on the day of the interview for legal purposes, which means he would be inclusive. Or he would be able to accompany. This is a little complicated, which is why you should call a lawyer like right. me, right? Because I can explain this to you. No, that's the reason why they should call you. 844-774-3529, 844-PPID-LAW. Here's another one. Hello, Hello. I'm, hello I'm a green card holder. Um, I petitioned for my husband and I'm using a Medicaid insurance because I just had a baby this year of February. I can't work now for, I can't work for now as I am still taking care of my baby. My question is, will my husband be exempted to public charge during his interview, even though I am using Medicaid or do I need to cancel my Medicaid insurance? I wouldn't cancel the Medicaid insurance. I have to just check, but it seems to me that would be okay. And that'll only come up at the time of the interview, which could be a year or two from now, and maybe won't need Medicaid then, but it seems to me off the top of my head that you should be okay on Medicaid. You know, right. just- He's certainly not exempt. There is no such thing. Just, right. just, to, just to add, Medicaid, if you take Medicaid during an emergency, such as childbirth, it's typically not an issue. If you're just on Medicaid because you wanna be on Medicaid and there's no medical emergency, that's a problem. Okay. But, you know, I hear this question often. And again, it's okay for the mother, obviously, while giving birth uh, to be on Medicaid because she needs medical care. You know, that's considered, again, emergency medical care. And when okay. she goes to the, when the interview comes up, she may not be on Medicaid anymore. Right. That's true. That's true. Once again, folks, the number is uh, 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. Last night at around 1.45 a.m., someone sent me this directly, all right? Um, I am a VAWA applicant and married to a permanent resident of the United States, which is what led me to ask that question earlier. Um, um, we have three children. Two of them are American citizens. My husband beat me and threatened to report me with immigration and forced me to leave the USA. I sent my I-360 application from Mexico and I'm still waiting if they approve me. But my husband, husband continues to threaten to kill me and take our children. He sends me offensive texts and I fear for my life and that of my children. In March of this year, I had attempted kidnapping. I had, a, I had attempted kidnapping and made a complaint. I would like to know if I can request a humanitarian permit or refuge to protect my children and me while I wait for the decision of my I-360. I have the messages that my husband sends me as proof. Should I send a letter to the USCIS telling what is happening to me or would it affect my I-360 application? I replied, call PPID 844-774-3529. That's what I did last night. Gentlemen, any reply yeah, to it? I, I would definitely say I think she needs to give us a call I'm not sure I follow her story. So she left to Mexico because she was scared and she wants humanitarian parole to come back in. I don't know. That's it, why it, it, you know, look, squeeze. In a lot of these, you know, when we answer questions, we're providing general information. It should not be construed as legal advice. You know, right. we're hearing snippets or bits and pieces of questions and we're obviously many times assuming facts not necessarily provided by the person. Um, VAWA is somewhat complex. It's not necessarily straightforward. Um, yeah, she's eligible for VAWA. I imagine her VAWA should continue, but 
I would need to ask more questions before I could provide a definitive answer. So I okay. think she should definitely get, feel free to give us a call. Um, you know, it's a free phone consultation. It's, there's no cost to speaking with an attorney on the phone and just getting some advice. Um, as I said before, I'm not sure, you know, so she left because she was scared, but now she wants to come back in. So if she comes back in, wouldn't the threat be more imminent than if she stays in Mexico? You yeah, know, so. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm also going to give you the number for you to call her. Um, but I gave her, I gave her the 212 number because evidently she's out of the country based on the number that she texted me from. And uh, so right. I, will send, I will send you the, um, the number and you can reach out to her. But, you know, and also, you know, just to add, yes, saving text messages, saving phone calls, saving police reports, all of that is evidence of abuse, you know, and, um, you know, obviously, if need be, you know, many times when you deal with VAWA, you know, immigration issues, what's called a request for evidence, and they want to see any additional or updated evidence you may have, obviously, that's something she would want to provide. This you know, you know what, David? Actually, you should have her email us. Okay. All and right. schedule, okay. Uh, because that's Mexico's an international call. Yeah. What's the email address you want me to give them? Um, R E S at P P I D dot com. Okay. Done. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. The Maverick. He was on fire today. On fire. <laughs> um, Alan, thanks for the news update. And Conrad, thanks for being so moderate today. <laughs> you know, great show. I'm just messing with you all. Fabulous show. Phenomenal show. You know, and I want to thank you all so much for what it is that you're doing for the communities out there from all over. This has been Cruising with a Case Handler, the Immigration Link um, episode and special and I believe we got through a wealth of questions and we heard a lot of information, a lot of information from all of you. And I do appreciate it. However, uh, everyone out there, please dial the number, get a free phone consultation with one of the attorneys. Okay, and then after that, you can choose to hire them, I would. The number is 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. And for the individual outside of the country. I also gave them the 212 number, hopefully. Um, that's the one from the website. I gave that to them also. So once again, the number is 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. Carolyn Anderson, the Tiger, everybody on Facebook. Thank you so much for sharing. You all did a wonderful job. Our numbers were up today on Facebook. So that was great. Thank you all so much. With that said, we got to remind you, ladies and gentlemen, that yes, this has been an an attorney advertisement and prior results will not guarantee similar outcome, but please make sure you reach out to one of the attorneys and speak to them for free over the phone. The number 844-774-3529. That's 844-774-3529. Thank you all so much, gentlemen. Have yourself an amazing day. Thank you. Uh, Thanks.